some of the most up-to-date scientific equipment, we endeavour to gather evidence that there is life after death. These are our investigations into the mysterious world of the paranormal. Whatever you have seen, whatever you have felt, Whatever you believe, there is more to this world. There is the ghost dimension. Tonight we investigate an airport, which has been home to aircraft flights since 1930. And there have been numerous claims of paranormal events occurring at this location and most of the accounts have been directly related to the aircraft that reside here. Literally thousands of passengers would have passed through this airport, including famous faces such as the Beatles. Hello and welcome. On this site in 1936, there was a tragic and fatal accident that took place between two planes that weren't even in the air. This is the original Speak Airport and this is Ghost Dimension. In 1933, Liverpool Speak Airport was officially opened and began flights across the Irish Sea as well as local and domestic flights between Eccles, Salford, Birmingham and Croydon Airport near London. During the Second World War, the airport was requisitioned by the Royal Air Force and was known as RAF Speak. In three, two, one, On October the 8th, 1940, at the time of the Battle of Britain, a flight lieutenant, Dennis Gillam, piloting his Hawker Hurricane, took off from this airport and was confronted by a German Junkers 88 crossing his path. He engaged and shot down the enemy aircraft before he even had time to raise his undercarriage, classing it as the fastest air-to-air -air combat kill of all time. In 1936, legendary air pilot Captain Tom Campbell Black was about to wow the crowds with the display of his air skills when he collided with another aircraft on the ground. The plane he collided with cut through his cockpit with its propeller, mortally wounding Captain Black, who died from his injuries on the way to hospital. Pilot Campbell Black in 1936 came here to get his aircraft named Miss Liverpool. And as he was taxiing away to leave, he couldn't see out the cockpit and there was another plane coming towards him who couldn't see him. And they collided and he was severely injured in the accident and died a bit later on. And apparently he's still here and he's haunted. He's been seen on the airfield and in the old hangar buildings. And there's been a few people who've gone in and resigned apparently afterwards. In the 70s there was an air hostess who accidentally walked into a propeller and died and when they were rebuilding the hangar into David Lloyd um, she didn't like it and she made a lot of noise and there was screaming heard and some of the workmen left and wouldn't come back. There have been multiple paranormal reports at this airport which could be connected to the tragic accidents that have happened in the past and it wasn't long before we came into contact with this activity, prior to starting the investigation. So we come over to film some shots the day before. 
and we're getting activity already at one of the aircrafts. Yeah. Do it again. We've just had two knocks in response. And two knocks. I hear that. Is this squadron, Lee? Squadron leader G Lee. Is it somebody else? Can you knock back for me? Stopped. Stopped. So what happened? <clears throat> I just thought I'd. We're, because we'd heard it knock a couple yeah. of times when we were going past it, I thought I'd try it. So I've knocked, we've had two knocks back. Knocked twice, two knocks back again. Ooh. It's knocking again. And there again, and again. And then you know what, it's right? It's in twos. Behind, Three. I, was, I was filming at the other engine, the other side, yeah. and as I put the camera in, it was knocking on it, and I just presumed it was someone else. Let's just yeah. rip over to it. Yeah. Can you knock again for me, please? Can you knock again if you're here? <gasps> oh my god, again? Yeah. You get knocks? Yeah. Uh, twice, yeah. It's coming from the engine this time. It's coming from the engine, yeah. I've got to say, by the way, that this aircraft's been decommissioned, so there's no way this is an no. engine cooling down. No. This is a plane that's been out of commission for god knows how many years. Yeah. So we're just getting some interesting knocking sounds coming back. And again. And again. Fantastic. Hearing the noises coming directly from the aircraft in the broad daylight and with so much power, we decided that upon our return for the investigation that we would attempt to make contact during the daylight hours, which is when most of the activity has been reported. My first impressions of this place is because it's a bit of a, I suppose, excitement for me. As a kid, I really did enjoy planes the same way I enjoy stuff like tanks, etc. So it, I do feel a bit like a kid coming to a place like this. Um, if it was, if it was haunted, I suppose it would just add to the thrill as well. But again, the, I can think of reasons behind why stuff will be happening in these planes. This plane's a lot older than the others, and it's also very thin compared to modern standards so banking again on the thermal thermal expansion it could have been it's just got hot it's got cold it's contracted it's expanded and it just gave off creaks and cracks again here and there there are multiple aircraft at this airport and each one of them has its own story to tell but could all of them be haunted Hawker Sidley, in comparison to some of the planes that I'll be visiting tonight, is relatively modern. The reason, the reason why it would be, I suppose, haunted would be related to a connection, I suppose, in some way. So you have people who are fans of planes, the same way you have them fans of trains, etc. Or somebody who actually worked on the plane itself. Maybe they had an accident whilst it was in the build, or again, maybe they just had a connection with the build. So upon their death, they had they came back to visit, I suppose. It's their art their artwork is their craft so it will be something important to them. A Jetstream aircraft is also housed at the aerodrome and although it has a modern appearance ghostly groans have also been heard inside of the plane while no other living soul has been in the vicinity. So although this building now it's been changed into a hotel it was an airport at one point if you've got people let's say that died before conversion was actually made, maybe their spirits are coming back here to visit some of the planes that they were fascinated with at the time. You know, who knows, maybe the spirits are still flying high at Speak Airport. Ghost Dimension. Speak Aerodrome is rich with paranormal ghostly encounters that could be linked to the aircraft that reside here. But would any of them show themselves as we prepare to board the planes of spiritual encounters? Speak Aerodrome Heritage. Fantastic. An amazing location. Yeah. Full of aircrafts that have been in service over the years. Yeah. 
I've always wanted to investigate an aeroplane. Is it on the bucket list of investigations to do to see if there's any spiritual energy that can be captured, not only in a building, but inside a physical aircraft? Well, what's going to be interesting today is it's a first for Ghost Dimension. We're doing it in the daylight because many things happened in the daylight with these aircrafts, um, and many of the tales told happened in the day. So it's a first for Ghost Dimension. There's going to be no infrared, there's going to be no dark, pitch black, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what we've got because we've already got things, haven't we? Well, yes. In the aeroplanes. Yeah, but well, yesterday we came yeah. to do some shots and the activity happened to them. We knew then, didn't we? We yeah. knew that we don't need to be here hanging about all night. We need to investigate this in the day because yeah. that's when these reports have been witnessed and encountered. Yeah. So I, I'm excited. Really, really excited. I think we should get going. I think we should. I think we should uh, watch our footing. Yeah. And get out of here. Yeah. There are three planes at the airport that we will be investigating, all with their own unique history and hauntings. And with us already experiencing activity prior to the investigation, we have high expectations as we prepare to be locked into the aircraft, one by one, for solo vigils. Bye, have a nice trip. shut in to this one. Wow, well, some force on that door. Let me just adjust my light because I have to get the light on. Look at this. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. Let me show you down. Isn't that lovely? A small plane. Can you imagine this flying in the air? Can you imagine sitting in a seat? flying in this. Well, I'm going to sit in 9C. Ah, let's see what happens. I'm going to turn you inside a bit because the lighting's not great. So, this is the jet stream and it's fantastic. While Bex investigates the jet stream, I investigate the Percival Prince, which staff claim a very successful pilot once flew. Well, he was, when he came out in the RAF, he was chief pilot for Shell, which was the people who owned. Yeah. And so it, it's odds on that he, he, he was, he did pilot it, but there's no record because Bardiff very often didn't fill his logbooks in. Could Badr still be present in this aircraft? Or is there someone else still residing here that is attempting to make contact to retell their own personal story? I'm going to ask and call out and see if I can get a reaction from any of the spirits in this uh, aircraft that may still be here. Maybe they're not here, who knows? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna put the Oculus in the cockpit. I'm hopefully gonna take my sunglasses off in just a second. Hopefully that'll help. It is really, really high at this moment in time. Pardon. But we will survive, eh? Right, oh, this is so exciting. This here is the ladder. That if this plane was crashing and you needed to get out in an emergency, that was it. That's how you got out. It was this bad boy right here. And I mean, look, it's just attached to there. And that was the way you're getting out. Spring. Okay. Whoa. Where's the rem? The rem's going as well. The rem's going. Thank you. I think we've got a presence in here, have we? Is there a man in here? 
the hell was that? While I was explaining about the escape ladder, the obelisk spoke out with the word spring, followed by a reading on the REM pod. I was certain I was in the presence of a spirit being, and to confirm my beliefs, the following sound, which sounds like footsteps inside of the plane, can be heard. Is there a man in here? The hell was that? The hell was that? The hell was that? Had I just made contact with Badr or another spirit entity? Only time would tell as the investigation continues. Paul was now on a lockdown in the Hawker Sidley. What would he experience during his investigation? Hi everybody. Bye. Is there somebody up here at the rear of the plane? Can you come and touch that aerial there for me? Make that go off? Or move something at the back? Or knock on something? Let's just set something here. Award again. Award. So, let me show you what equipment I have. I've kept with me the ovulus. So I'm going to turn that on, and once again, I'm going to prop it up so we can see it. And I have a REM pod, which I'm just going to open now. And I'm going to put the REM pod on C9C. This is where I was standing. If there's any spirits, sorry, sitting. If there's any spirits that would like to communicate with me, please come and touch the equipment. I've got another REM pod which I will put. Demon! Demon! Seriously? Wow, okay. Didn't expect that one. Why would you say you're a demon? I was unsure why the ovulus just said demon, as there had been no negative reports of a demonic spirit aboard this aircraft. Perhaps this was the spirit attempting to warn me away from someone they believed was evil. What more was I about to encounter? The meter is showing signs of going off. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. That's what it looks like from the outside. My ovulus has just gone off and it says bike. Bike. This is far from being a bike. It's fantastic. So I'm just going to go on and call out. So if you're in here, can you please chat to me. I'm going to do that so you can see down uh, the alleyway, see what we can see. And then we'll take a trip up there. I might sit in the cockpit in a bit and see what happens, see if we get any different vibes from, from doing that. Is there anybody here? Let's go to the back. I'm putting my shades on because look at that. That is so sore. It's red. It's just going to keep any of the pollen out of my eyes. Can you come forward? If that was you that just made that noise, if that was you, use your voice. Come and communicate with me. I feel like very uneasy in here. Like, I just as I said that, there was another voice. I was saying I feel uneasy in here. And there was a voice, I was going to say, not uneasy and nasty or negatively like unsteady on my feet and then bang there was a voice Ghost Dimension 
Our investigation has taken us to Speak Aerodrome to investigate paranormal claims from the wartime and aviation accidents. And it appears that our presence inside of the aircraft has kickstarted the spirit energies to make contact with us. Can you communicate with me and tell me your name? That's really weird. I'm going to walk down near the back of the plane. Can you? Okay, that was weird. As I was walking, I heard a growl. That was really weird. What was the growl? What could the growl have been? I'm going to walk into the... Oh! Oh, it goes up. Oh, wow, this is small. Let me show you. This is really small. Oh, that's stuck, look. That's stuck on. That door closes. Should we see what's in there? I think it's a toilet, isn't it? Have a look. Oh, no. Look. This is the back of the plane. Let me show you. So now, secluded in the back of the plane. It's very small. Is there anybody in here? Anybody at all that wants to communicate? My name's Bex and I'm a paranormal investigator. It'd be nice to communicate with you. Hello? As I investigate the rear of the plane, it appears that I was not alone, and two clear taps can be heard. Hello? Right now, I was unclear as to what had just made these noises. Maybe they are connected to the sound Sean was also encountering. The hell was that? Would the same spirit making these noises also make themselves known on the aircraft Paul was investigating? Can you please come up to one of my other devices where the aerials are sticking up? Friends, yes, and it's a powerful one again. 2007, friends. Yes, I'm here with friends. Have you seen my friends today? Do you miss yours? I've already said, if you wish, I'll be your friend. I shall offer you my hand as a friend. Would you like to come and take my hand and shake it? Happily take your hand as friend. And you do... Ooh! Ooh! That felt like an electric shock. Did you just touch my hand? I apologise for pulling it away. If you did, I really do apologise. Oh, that felt like a, a little spark on my, the tips of my fingers. It's believed that a spirit can use energy to manifest. Had Paul just felt this energy from a spirit reaching out to his hand? Oh, that was weird. Really didn't mean to frighten you. It just, if you touched me then, it just gave me a little bit of a shock really disorientating when you um oh the ovulus said stroke when you don't know where your foot on is I'm just gonna spin you around again so you can see what I'm seeing did you die of a stroke is that how you passed did you die of a stroke is that how you passed Wave. Hi. Hi. See, the REM pod is definitely, definitely going to go off, I think, because it's making a little bit of noise. If I sat here, would you communicate further with me? I think the REM pod is going off because I'm sitting here. I think I may have. I'm just going to turn the REM pod off and on again because I think it may. I may have touched it. 
Is there anybody here? So did you die of a stroke? Oh man. And you just try and sit down. There we go. Um Jesus. Jesus, do you follow Jesus? Okay. I'm not gonna sit down. Because it'll set me REM pod off again. So I'll just show you in inside instead and see if anything moves or, or anything. Okay, REM pod went off. Oh, that's bizarre. Hold on. What does this say again? So the REM pod's gone off and bought atomic. Sorry, automatic. Automatic. Can't read today. Okay, let's play a game. Five. You make in five seconds, you make a noise. Five, four, three, two, one. At the back. Okay, that was at the back. Show yourself on the camera. Whoa, thank you. That noise and that tap again. Again, there are tapping noises that are now responding to my questions. And I do not feel any threat from this entity. I also sense that I may be coming closer to identifying who is haunting this aeroplane. There's something weird in here. That I can't explain yet. It's like something. It's like a playful spirit. And this is the cockpit. Let's get in the cockpit. Right, we're in the cockpit. That's me setting the rem off because we're too close to it. But, I mean, this is the steering for the aircraft. Are you in here with me? Can you move the aircraft? The, the, can you move this? That's me. Can you move it? Once again, as I am asking a spirit entity to come forward and interact with the aeroplane, I have caught a light anomaly, also known as an orb. The orb appears to come from the aircraft control wheel, which moments earlier I had asked the spirit to move. And what was even more interesting was this light was caught in broad daylight and without any reflection of infrared light that can sometimes create orb light anomalies. Whatever had caused this orb also seemed to have an effect on myself and instantly I felt drained of all my own energy. I no idea what's going on, all I can tell you right now. It's a feel a bit lightheaded again. And I got red eye. Lightheaded and red eyed. Could you use this device here to tell me what your name is? Is there somebody at the back? Did you make a noise before? Could you do that again for me, please? Wow. Ooh. Should and a knock. A knock and should. Should. I didn't know, I wasn't expecting that knock and it just kind of threw me off what I was asking. What was I asking? It also appears that the spirit Paul was communicating with had started to drain his energy. And Paul began to feel its effects and forgot what he was asking. Ghost dimension. Our investigation so far at Speak Aerodrome was proving to be a successful one and likely a day at the airport, we will never forget.
I'm now sitting in 4A. Can you do something else for me? Can you do something? Can you make a loud bang? Yeah, thank you very much for that loud bang. If you were flown during the war and you were here during the war and you were flying this aircraft or maybe you were just a passenger on this aircraft, tell me what it was like. Speak to me. I know there's nothing bad here, but I know there's something haunting this place. Did you die outside on the runway? You still wander the, the aircraft grounds? Is that what it is? You died outside? Tell me what it is. Please come forward and speak to me. My name's Sean, I'm a paranormal investigator and I'm only here. But the hell, that was a rim. Walk in front of that rim again, go on. Set that rim off. Is there anybody that flew this? I think it was a Dan Air. Did you fly for the, the oil. oil again? Oh, that's another powerful one, 1756. Oil. Were you a mechanic? Am I missing this? We, I'm going for high end here with pilots, but perhaps were you a mechanic? Is that what you're trying to tell me? This is fantastic. It really is. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't write this stuff. I'm going to take you back up to where the cockpit is because when I go up to where the cockpit is, the ovulus seems to go off. So is that because somebody what is communicating with me, somebody's still here, is sitting this, this plane? Let me try and sit down again. Ah, the REM pod didn't go off this time. So I wonder, before when the REM pod went off, was that paranormal? Was that natural? Was that me? Who knows? But the REM pod went off before, and the REM pod's going off, uh, stayed quiet now. If there's anybody in on this fight with me, can you set my equipment off, please? Give me the runaround. I'm happy to do it. Three, two, one. Can you set my equipment off? Anybody? Wow. Maybe I shouldn't fiddle. Right, I heard that. That was three taps. Three taps. Can you do another three taps to prove to me this is real? I heard that from back here. Are you inside this cockpit? Walk towards my device on the floor if you are. And alarm it. button here for a fan. It's hot in here. <laughs> it doesn't work. Oh, on, please. That must work. It doesn't work. The thing about this aircraft business is I can't get out of here until the guys come and let me out. And uh, basically this is locked down on a plane. Locked down inside of a plane, should I say? Locked down. There's no, you know, 
The, the escape hatch is in here, it's sealed. They do not break. The windows, you can see, they do not open. This is as locked in of any location you can get. It's just completely locked down. Odd little bits and pieces going on. You see, this is a it's not just a first for us, it's a first for this place. This place has never had anybody come in and investigate it the way we do. Or anybody who investigate the paranormal here. So it could be the age old story when they're not sure what's going on, they don't quite know what to do or how to react and interact with what we've got. They can be a little bit uh, hesitant. be the case right now, I'm not sure, but there's just little bits and pieces and sometimes that's all it takes and it's good, but we always want a little bit more don't we? As the investigation was drawing to a close, I noticed that all of the chair trays had been in the upright position, yet somehow one of these trays had come undone. Apologise if you're getting dizzy. Oh, oh, oh! I know that wasn't down before. Pretty sure that wasn't down before. It's clear to see that earlier on in my investigation all of the trays were upright and secured. So who or what was it that caused this apparent paranormal activity on board this aircraft? One week after our departure from Speak Aerodrome, we received contact from Britannia Aircraft Preservation Trust that their aircraft, the Bristol Britannia, which was unavailable for investigation at the time, also had its own haunting. So Paul and I head back to investigate its claims and attempt to uncover its ghostly goings on. The aircraft itself is a Bristol Britannia. It was built in 1956. Um, it flew with various airlines until it ended its life around about 1980 um, on a fire dump uh, in the south of England. Um, it was cut actually into three pieces and was ready for the scrap man. Um, it was rescued by one of its former loadmasters, a man called Roger Hargreaves, who purchased it for the princely sum of one pound. Um, it spent quite a few years at a number of uh, restoration areas uh, until it found itself at Speak in Liverpool in uh, 2007, i.e. 10 years ago, and uh, it's spent its life ever since um, trying to be restored, so um, it's, uh, it's been saved so far. I'm quite a facts-driven individual, so I have to say I need proof of things. Um, that said, it does have a certain feel about it, so I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised. Would this aircraft be as active as our previous investigation? And with so much history attached to it, are the spirits still buckled up, ready to take flight? I think we should maybe start off investigating um, this central bit, mm -hmm. and then head over into the cockpit. Yeah, sounds good to like. Let's go to the ramp. <coughs> well, bless you. Must be those all to get up my nose. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <coughs> we're here. We're paranormal investigators. We're not here to do anything other than communicate with you. So if there's anybody here that's in visitation to this plane, maybe you worked on it, maybe you flew the plane, and you're the spirit person that's making noises and knocks of the ones that we heard earlier. Can you do something? Use your voice and let us hear you or do something that we can hear. Maybe move something down the back or throw something. Play that knock. There was like a tap. Yeah, 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 yeah I heard that yeah. tap. 
If that was you, can you knock again? Yeah, that was tap yeah, tap down there. Yeah. Should we go down? Yeah, let's yeah. have a look. Make sure nobody's not close enough. The ram? The ram just went off and neither of us were close enough. Let's just check that. No. no it was, it was us. It was me. It was us, Paul. Apologise. This was the living. Right, we're here now, we're down here where we heard the noise. We can hear the rain on the side of the plane, but can you make another noise? The noise that you just made. Yeah. What was that? Can you hear that noise? Yeah, down the back. I don't know where it came from, right? Oh no. That's not, but there was a voice down. <coughs> it was, no, I heard a voice, but I'm not out here in mechanical. Something mechanical out there. Yeah. If you just spoke a moment ago, can you say something again to us, please? Oh, that noise there. down there that time. Thank you. We could both hear voices, but the cameras were unable to capture the audio. So we decided to split up and head to each end to increase our chances. But, just as we were about to move, we caught something incredible. Tell us who you are. Wow. There's a lot of noise. That's, it's knock, knock, knock. Well, that just right, freaked me out. That just right. freaked me out. It's a bit weird, isn't it? That was like a... What the hell? There's some weird noises coming from here. There's nothing behind. What's behind that Paul? It's just uh, the last part of the plane. But there's no... Uh... What the hell was that? It sounds like there's somebody in there. And then whistling. Is it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So much somebody stuck in there. Let's see if this is intelligent. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see if we can knock on here, make a noise and copy us. Copy this noise. Tap tap to finish it. We finished it on tap tap. Ready? One more time. That was high. Oh, <coughs> we have a technical problem. Yeah, and no, I just got like a stabbing pain in this eye. Yeah. yeah. You would have been pointing at me, wouldn't you? So you would have saw that. Yeah. Uh, we have a technical problem. It's going off. Oh, that's weird. <coughs> so since we've been on here, that's quite a few issues with some of the equipment. It's drained. Yeah. And we've got a brand new, uh, well, a fully charged speaker there to go with the SB7, and the speaker is dead. We have problems with the cameras. Well, that's weird. That that's used and pulled all the energy and juice off it. Seems to be using it because there's a lot going on there. Dimension. We believe from our investigation at Speak Aerodrome that there are spirits haunting these aircraft, and perhaps they are here in visitation, still jetting off on their own ghostly journey. <laughs>